So you've been practicing traditional Chinese martial arts for years, maybe even decades, and you think you can fight. You think you're a fighter. You're probably wrong. Chinese martial arts were developed over centuries by warriors who had to fight and survive in brutal times. They developed techniques that stood the test of those times. To put it simply, if their stuff didn't work, it died because they died. Only those techniques that prove their value in actual combat got passed on to the next generation of fighters. It was survival of the effective. They went on to formalize that knowledge and experience as systems of martial arts. The fact that the Shaolin and Udang temples existed as environments in which those skills could be refined and passed on is one reason why those arts still exist today. Effective arts, proven arts, deadly fighting arts. But all those people are dead now, and the times they lived in are long gone. And you do not live in those times, and you are not those people, and neither am I. Let me first explain what I don't mean by fight. I don't mean practicing self-defense techniques against a compliant partner. I don't mean touch sparring or controlled sparring. I mean that you have several times come up against someone whose intention was to hurt you. Not once or twice, many times. Enough that you could discern a trend of success under a real threat of harm. I mean in a ring, in an octagon, in a gym, on the streets of a rough neighborhood, on the door of a nightclub, in war. If all you know is how to cover your head and throw a simple jab and cross, and you've held your own many times against those who wanted to break you. It's appropriate to think of yourself as a fighter. On the other hand, you can call yourself master this and sifu that, and maybe even perform your martial art with great skill. But if you do not fight, you are not a fighter. And there is no shame in that. Traditional Chinese martial arts, despite their violent origins, offer a lot more than the opportunity to punch someone's lights out. So much more. I am not a fighter. I have done some fighting, but not enough to establish a trend. And it's not something I'm interested in taking up in my late 50s. I consider myself a student, a practitioner and a coach, but not a fighter. I can hit hard. But being able to consistently land heavy hits on the bag is not the same as landing them on a tough, fit, probably young, moving opponent who's trying to hit you back. I'm happy for someone to visit and test themselves against me, hard, but at my age I've no wish to risk my health, and particularly my brain health, just to prove that my balled up fists are bigger than yours. Some of my colleagues are practitioners only. They don't coach and they don't fight. Some are practitioners and fighters. Some are practitioners and coaches and fighters. I believe that martial arts schools need all three, but not necessarily in every member. Although I do believe that the best members will embody all three aspects. Schools die out when they lack practitioners and coaches, and they survive in name only when they have no fighters at all, no matter how good their practitioners and coaches are. If you're interested in learning more about this, I've put some links in the description box below. There's an Irish saying, you have to do your own growing, no matter how tall your grandfather was. In terms of martial arts, my grandfather was the late Chi Kim Tong. I took my black sash test in front of him. He certified me as an instructor. I was told he first killed a man in a duel when he was 16 by kicking him in the chest. He killed many more as a soldier in the Sino-Japanese War, empty-handed and with weapons. 
He was a fighter in a sense that goes far beyond the modern sense of the word in combat sports. He was a fighter in a sense that would be more familiar to a modern special forces soldier. And how does all that real fighting experience and skill impact my ability as a fighter? Not at all. You do not inherit fighting ability from your predecessors. You do your own growing, no matter how tall your grandmaster was. When I look at the world of Chinese martial arts today, I do so with disappointment. Not because there are no more fighters of Master Chi's ilk. To be honest, that would be horrific. Because you cannot have a Chi Kim Tong without the brutal and cruel times that he lived through. And who wants that? My disappointment is with the martial arts practitioners who assume they can fight. And it's even worse when they talk about it. Years ago, I was dismayed to see a Wu Tzu Chuan instructor declare on an internet forum that Wu Tzu Chuan is the finest fighting system in the world. How the hell would he know? He had never even done one full contact session, never mind being in an actual fight. Even highly skilled pr practitioners disappoint when they delude themselves in this way. Unfortunately, Wu Tzu Chuan has as many such people as any other Chinese martial art. Of course, I reserve my greatest disappointment for bad practitioners who are deluded in every regard. And Chinese martial art seems to attract the cosplayers who like the idea of being a deadly warrior and dressing like an extra in an old Jet Li movie. So my plea to you from one practitioner of Chinese martial arts to another is this. Practice your art for its own sake, but if you don't actually fight, don't claim to be a fighter. If you do, to any objective listener, you sound like a child mouthing off in a schoolyard. Thanks for watching.